300,000 years ago, a group of early humans huddles around a flickering fire in the African savanna, their rugged faces lit by the glow. They're strong, resilient, built to survive a world of predators and scarcity. Now fast forward to today. You're sitting there, maybe stepping, maybe scrolling on your phone, living in a world those ancestors could never imagine. We're still homo sapiens, but are we really the same spoiler alert we're not? From the size of our brains to the strength of our bones, humans have changed in ways that'll blow your mind. In this video, we're diving into the wild story of human evolution, how we've transformed over millennia, why it matters and what it means for our future. Stick around because by the end, you'll see yourself in a whole new light. I'm your guy, Dr. Amara Cade, a paleoanthropologist who spent years piecing together the puzzle of our past. Let's embark on this epic journey together. I'm Dr. Amara Cade, and my lab here at the Institute of Human Origins is my time machine. Surrounded by ancient skulls, fossil casts, and high-tech DNA sequencers, I study how humans have evolved from our earliest days to now. My passion, uncovering the stories hidden in our bones, genes, and lifestyles. Today, I'm taking you on a 300,000-year adventure to explore how we've changed physically, mentally, and culturally. Our setting is this lab, but we'll travel through time from dusty savannas to modern cities to see how humans have become who we are today. Let's start with a big question. What makes modern humans different from our ancestors? One of the first things you might notice if you met an early human is their stature. Back in my grad school days, I worked on a dig in Ethiopia unearthing skeletons from 200,000 years ago. Those early sapiens were tall men averaging around 5'10 women close to 5'6. But here's the twist, height hasn't been a straight lineup. About 10,000 years ago, something wild happened. Humans got shorter, dropping by about 10%, why it all ties to a massive shift in how we lived. When humans swapped hunting and gathering for farming, it wasn't the golden age we might imagine. Early agriculture meant relying on a few crops like wheat or rice, which led to malnutrition. I've seen ancient bones with telltale signs of deficiency, pitted surfaces, weakened structures. Add in diseases from living close to livestock, and our bodies took a hit. By the Middle Ages, the average European man was barely 5'5". Five five. But here's the comeback story since the Industrial Revolution, better nutrition and healthcare have pushed heights back up. Today, global averages are climbing with some populations like the Dutch averaging over six feet for men. This height roller coaster fascinates me because it shows how adaptable we are. Our bodies respond to our environment like clay in a sculptor's hands. But it also makes me wonder, are we reaching a peak or could future challenges like climate change or food insecurity send us downward again? In my lab, I've compared modern human skeletons to those of early sapiens and Neanderthals. The difference is stark. Early humans had dense, robust bones built for chasing prey or hauling heavy loads. Modern bones. They're lighter, more porous, sometimes half as dense. This isn't just academic, it's personal. My grandmother battled osteoporosis, a disease tied to this trend, and it's becoming more common. Why are our bones weaker? It started with farming. Hunting required strength and mobility, but farming meant staying put doing repetitive tasks. Fast forward to today, and sedentary lifestyles think desk jobs and Netflix binges are the norm. A 2023 study I reviewed found that even active modern humans don't match the bone density of our ancestors. This fragility limits our physical power and increases risks of fractures and diseases. This bone loss is a wake-up call. Our bodies are screaming, move more. But it's not just about hitting the gym. Our modern world with its conveniences is reshaping us in ways we're only beginning to understand. Could we engineer lifestyles to rebuild our strength or are we locked into this trend? Now let's get to the headspace literally. One of the most shocking changes is our brain size. Early sapiens had brains about 12% larger than ours, around 1,500 cubic centimeters compared to our 1,350. This shrinkage, confirmed by studies in 2023 and 2024, has sparked heated debates in my field. When I first presented this at a conference, the room was buzzing with theories. One idea is energy preservation. 
Brains are energy hogs burning 20% of our calories despite being 2% of our body mass. In a warmer world, smaller brains might help us stay cool. Another theory, the self-domestication hypothesis, suggests that as we built safer societies, we needed less brain power for survival. Think of it like domesticated dogs whose brains are smaller than wolves. But the timing doesn't quite add up, so I'm skeptical. The brain shrinkage debate keeps me up at night. If our brains are smaller, are we less intelligent? Scientists haven't found a clear link, but I wonder if our reliance on technology like GPS or Google means we're outsourcing our cognitive load. It's not all doom and gloom though. Smaller brains might be more efficient wired for our complex world. Still, it's a reminder that evolution doesn't always mean better. Modern humans have smaller jaws and teeth than our ancestors, a trend that's accelerated in the last 10,000 years. I once studied a 30,000-year-old skull with a jaw so robust it could crack walnuts. Compare that to today, where dental offices are packed with people needing braces or wisdom tooth extractions. The culprit, our diets, agriculture brought soft foods, grains, porridges, unlike the tough roots and meat our ancestors chewed. Recent processed foods like burgers and smoothies have made it worse. Smaller jaws mean less room for teeth, leading to crowding and misalignment. Even more concerning recessed jaws can narrow airways contributing to sleep apnea, a condition where breathing stops intermittently during sleep. Meet Sarah, a 28-year-old graphic designer I met at a seminar. She struggled with sleep apnea, waking up exhausted despite eight hours of sleep. Her dentist linked it to her small jaw, a trait she never considered. Orthodontic treatment helped, but her story shows how ancient changes ripple into modern lives. How many of us are dealing with issues tied to our evolutionary past without realizing it? We're getting colder. In 1868, a German doctor pegged normal body temperature at 98.6 degree ohm. But a 20 study, which I dove into for a journal club, found it's closer to 97.9 degree F today, dropping 0.05 degree F per decade. My students love this fact. It's like humans are literally chilling out. Why improved living standards? Fewer infections and less inflammation mean our bodies don't need to run as hot. Early humans battling constant diseases were likely warmer. This shift is subtle but profound, showing how deeply our environment shapes us. This temperature drop makes me optimistic. It's proof that better healthcare and sanitation can change us for the better. But it also raises questions. If we keep cooling, could it affect our metabolism or immunity? Only time will tell. One of the biggest wins in human evolution is our lifespan. Early sapiens lived about 27.5 years on average. Today, it's 73.2 years over two and a half times longer. I see this in my family. My great-grandfather died at 45, but my parents are thriving in their 70s. Technology, vaccines, antibiotics, clean water has been a game changer. But there's a flip side. Technology has brought downsides like poor eyesight from screen time. My colleague and optometrist says myopia rates are soaring, especially in kids glued to devices. Other tech-related issues include diabetes from processed foods and cancer from pollutants. Evolution giveth and evolution taketh away. Consider Raj, a 40-year-old software engineer I interviewed. He's healthy but wears thick glasses due to years of coding. His story is common. Our eyes haven't caught up to our screen-heavy lives. It's a reminder that progress comes with trade-offs. Early humans confined to Africa were less varied in appearance. But about 70,000 years ago, groups ventured out facing new climates and challenges. This sparked a diversity explosion. Lighter skin evolved in low sunlight regions for vitamin D absorption. Blue eyes, some argue, help with light scattering in dim northern winters. In East Asia, the epicanthic fold may protect against snow glare. I met Tenzin, a Tibetan student, during a field trip to the Himalayas. His family's high altitude adaptations, efficient hemoglobin, larger lung capacity, let them thrive where others struggle. Meanwhile, the Sama Bajau of Southeast Asia, who I studied during a research project, have spleens twice the size of their neighbors, letting them die for five minutes on a single breath. These adaptations are like superpowers tailored by evolution. This diversity is humanity's strength. 
It shows our ability to adapt to any corner of the planet, but it also challenges us to celebrate differences rather than divide over them. In my lab, every skull tells a story of resilience and adaptation, something we need to remember today. Our genes tell a similar story. Africa remains the cradle of genetic diversity, with populations there showing more variation than anywhere else. Globally, genetic diversity has skyrocketed due to population growth and interbreeding with Neanderthals and other hominins. A 24 study I co-authored found that Neanderthal DNA influences traits like immune response and even hair color in some populations. This genetic mixing is like a cosmic recipe, blending ingredients from different hominins. It's humbling to think we carry echoes of extinct cousins in our DNA. But it also raises ethical questions as we edit genes with tools like CRISPR. Are we ready to steer our own evolution? Finally, let's talk about the elephant in the room technology. It's let us conquer climates from Arctic tundras to desert cities, but it's also reshaping us in unexpected ways. In my lab, I see how reliance on tech like calculators or AI might be reducing cognitive demands, echoing the brain shrinkage debate. Meanwhile, cultural shifts like processed diets or sedentary jobs are literally reshaping our bodies. Technology is our greatest tool and our biggest wild card. It's given us longer lives, but also new challenges. The question isn't whether we'll keep changing, it's whether we can guide those changes for the better. So what's the takeaway? Back in my lab, surrounded by fossils and data, I'm struck by one truth changes are constant. From taller heights to weaker bones, smaller brains to diverse faces, humans have never stopped evolving. But unlike our ancestors, we have the power to shape our future. We can choose to move more, eat better, and use technology wisely. We can embrace our diversity as a strength, not a divider. My name is Dr. Amara Cade, and I believe our story is still being written. What chapter will you add? Hit that like button, subscribe, and let's keep exploring the human journey together. Until next time, keep evolving.